Hey folks, my name is Joe Barnard, and today I'm here to do a shop tour. So I am here at my shop. No, uh, no, dude. No, it's mine. <laughs> I work it's here. We're here with my friends at Astronus to do a shop tour, uh, and let's get started. We invited Joe Barnard to come to our facility. If you haven't heard of Joe, he's a self-taught rocket scientist. He literally started from zero and built a rocket that launched and landed back down on Earth. Well, there you go! And he pitched us an idea for a video, which he described like this. You know that video that's like $10 cheeseburger versus $1,000 cheeseburger? What if we did that, but like, aerospace companies. Joe's video does a great job talking about the differences between his facility and ours. His EE lab, our EE lab, his production facility, ours. And in the end, it kind of comes across that Astronus is this big company, you know, that's a, the behemoth, but that's not how it feels to us. And we wanted to share some stories about us in the early days, back when we were a small company in an even smaller apartment, but with a really big dream. In those early days, Astronus looked much more like a startup than a traditional aerospace company. We were building a satellite in a literal apartment. We were doing things as fast as we possibly could because we knew that the way we would prove ourselves as a company is by getting something on orbit and operating just by our own hard work. We built Demosat in a studio apartment in downtown San Francisco. Uh, you can say that as many times as you want. You're not going to understand it. There's just something about that startup in a garage feel that is very, very special. We built Demosat in a clean room that I built out of shower curtains and, and PVC pipe. Just sitting over a little desk with the cheapest tools you could buy off eBay or Alibaba. <laughs> it's the best you could find. No. What, what does a day in the life look like for the satellite? How do you simulate that? How do you emulate that? How do you get all that working? That was the hardest part is defining that and then going in and actually testing it. Back then, we had no test equipment. We had to go out to do anything, but we also didn't really have the money or ability to go out to do anything. So the satellite has a way to detumble itself with what's called torque coils. On Earth, you have air resistance and other things, and so it's very hard to test this. We hung the satellite from a string, fishing line, from the second floor of the loft, down to the first floor into the kitchen. Protecting it with some pillows and things like that so it wouldn't fall down. And then we spun it up a couple spins and then just let the torque of the fishing line spin it back, watching this data and taking slow motion video with our iPhones. We did have one piece of equipment and that was a very small bandsaw, which was in a closet, which we called the bandsaw room. Uh, <laughs> and a number of uh, pieces were cut in there that are now in space. As we were bringing Joe around for his tour, it just kept dawning on me that this version of Astronus is so different than the Astronus that I joined. Visually speaking, the apartment we started off in, in this huge facility that we're at now, are very different from each other. But the mindset has always stayed the same. We want to move fast, we want to build things that work in outer space, and we want to scale that to the entire world. In the beginning, it was just this dream that was a twinkle in John and Ryan's eye. Today, it doesn't take that much more imagination to see how we can take this thing that works and scale it to everywhere. That's what we're going to do over the next years. We're going to build dozens and then hundreds of satellites, and it's exciting to be able to show you how we do it. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure you go watch Joe's video on his $1 cheeseburger that is actually an aerospace manufacturing facility. Thanks, see ya.